right, so we're back with the cybersecurity home lab project. After several months of not working on this project, I'm gonna take the next couple of weeks to finish the final elements within the original cybersecurity home lab project. It's been many months since I have uh, actually worked on this project myself, so I'm gonna leave a playlist in the description below for those of you who are new to the channel who can check it out and follow the process of building a cybersecurity home lab, really more of an entry level cybersecurity home lab. Today's video, we're gonna be working on the vulnerability scanner portion. And in this case, we are gonna be working with a product called Tenable Nessus Vulnerability Scanner. Now, before I get into the specific steps I will be doing today, I wanna to add in a little bit of edits to the cybersecurity home lab project. With the original topology up here, there's gonna be one element that I'm going to edit, and that is going to be the Palo Alto uh, Pan OS firewall. Now, I have the actual uh, firewall itself, the equipment, the hardware. In this case, I don't have the power plug to the Palo Alto image. The power cord is actually pretty expensive as this is an industry grade firewall. And to add on to that, what we're going to be doing is adding in a new machine, which is going to be a Windows XP machine. Very outdated, of course, but you'll see the reason why we are using this today. So in today's video, we're gonna be working with a vulnerability scanner, which is going to include several steps. Here is my base OS, which is Ubuntu, and I am running VMware Workstation, which allows me to virtualize all of my workstations and machines. In this case, what I'm going to do is create a new virtual machine inside here. It's going to be a baseline Ubuntu uh, desktop version. And then I'm going to set up the local host dashboard, which allows me to gain access to the vulnerability scanner from a UI perspective, so you can you know, work around with the user interface. Nessus vulnerability scanner is a very powerful tool, and we're just gonna be touching on some baseline things or actions that you can do. So in this case, I'm going to be going ahead and setting up the vulnerability scanner itself, then initiating a discovery scan. And then this is where the XP machine comes in. I'm gonna go ahead and install a Windows XP machine, which obviously is very vulnerable. And we're gonna go ahead and put it on a virtual machine here. We're gonna scan that XP machine to see what type of vulnerabilities come back. I also just want to pause right here for a moment and say if you are looking to build projects like this and you don't know if cybersecurity is right for you, I actually have a cybersecurity quiz, which is 25 questions, and it's going to point you in the right direction if you are or are not interested in cybersecurity. It goes over some basic concepts and characteristics that you must have to get into cyber. If you are just getting started in cybersecurity, this could be a great resource for you to see the level of interest you are at. It's a pretty straightforward uh, project today. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start by setting up the Ubuntu virtual machine here on my environment. All right, so here in front of me, I have a virtual VNC connection into my uh, computer here. So I'm remote in with a VNC uh, viewer. Now I'm gonna be using the Ubuntu 64-bit uh, desktop version that we connected uh, earlier within the project. And in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and install the Nessus vulnerability scanner uh, onto this specific virtual machine. So let's go ahead and start this up and then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and install the Nessus vulnerability scanner. All right, so a couple minutes later, I have installed the Nessus vulnerability scanner. In this case, I have installed the correct version. Make sure to look at the Nessus Essentials website and download the correct version depending on the Linux system. I just had trouble with that for a moment there. Uh, once that has happened, then we can go ahead and start the service and we can go to our local dashboard or local host on port 8834 and go ahead and set up the Nessus Essentials here. So let's go ahead and set this up and then start a new scan. This will just be a, a dummy scan for testing purposes. All right, so it's the next day. After a couple of hours, the Nessus Essentials uh, vulnerability scanner took a little while to set up and compile the plugins. So I'm back here in my home screen and I have the Nessus Essentials dashboard set up. And in this case, we are gonna have to go ahead and use a local discovery scan to discover the hosts. Before I do that, I'm actually gonna go ahead and install a Windows XP machine. Fortunately, I do have the ISO version of Windows XP, 
and even though Windows XP is decommissioned, it's no longer supported, I thought it would be a fun little element uh, to add within the home lab just to see how many vulnerabilities are disclosed. So in this case, what we're gonna do is go ahead and set up the virtual machine for Windows XP, and then initiate this uh, discovery scan on Nessus Essentials. So let's go ahead and set up that machine. All right, so here in front of me, I have my Windows XP Professional virtual machine up and running, and it's the sign of the times here. In fact, I couldn't even figure out how to open up the command line. I had to look it up. So here it is, the command line up on the Windows XP machine. So what we're gonna do here is two things. First, we're gonna create an initial scan to uh, discover the hosts on the network. Now, in this case, it's just gonna be the one host. After the discovery scan, we're gonna create a basic baseline scan, which will scan the XP machine host and disclose the vulnerabilities. So let's go ahead and create the initial discovery scan by going over to the Nessus vulnerability dashboard. We're gonna create a new scan. In this case, once again, it's just gonna be that host discovery. We'll just call this initial scan. And we're gonna go ahead and put in the IP address of 192.168.79.138. We're gonna go ahead and click save. We're gonna click the scan, click launch. And this should go ahead and look for any hosts. And in this case, it's just gonna be that, you know, that 138 IP address. Now you can go ahead and put in any IP address you wanted to. Of course, in a real world scenario, you're gonna have, you know, multiple workstations, hundreds probably, uh, in this case. All right, so up until this point, everything was running smooth, but I was about to encounter some troubles. After several tries of running the basic discovery scan, uh, the Nessus scanner was reporting four informational findings and nothing more on that XP machine, basically stating that it was a VM. After conducting several types of scans, I had found out that Nessus had trouble running VMs, running with the network address translation or NAT as the network setting. So after playing around and finally changing that setting to host only networking, the scans were able to run, but only on the host OS and the Ubuntu virtual machine, not the XP machine. I was still getting the same error. So I realized at that time that the XP machine wasn't able to even be pinged. So I went ahead and discovered a firewall rule to set ping and ICMP requests to be opened. All three machines, the host OS, Ubuntu virtual machine, and XP machine were able to now ping each other. I ran a basic discovery scan, then the network scan on the XP machine, and some vulnerabilities were reported, but again, not as many as expected. All right, it's several hours later. It took me a couple hours to figure out the settings to scan different machines. Uh, and for, I thought it was a lot easier, but anyway, let me go ahead and show you my findings here. All right, so as you can see here, you can do all types of scans. And in this case, I only did a couple of host discovery and basic network scans. Once I did that, uh, now I went ahead and uh, created some different types of scans. So here in front of me, one scan I have, for instance, is the host OS. Uh, in this case, I just went ahead and scanned the base Ubuntu system and you know some vulnerabilities. Uh, this scan was just a basic uh, network scan, as you can see, basic network scan. All right, so if we go back to the sample scan, in this case, I'm scanning the Ubuntu virtual machine. Here, there is a one vulnerability that was disclosed and again another basic network scan so here in front of me if we go to the sample vulnerability in this case it's in the ssl uh, path there as you can tell it gives you information for ways to remediate uh, the vulnerability so there we go uh, you know if you were a vulnerability analyst you would actually go out and uh, try to find the right people, whether that be you or someone else, to actually go out and remediate this vulnerability. And then finally, for the XP machine, I had some troubles. I'm not exactly sure why, but when I initiated a scan, uh, it really didn't disclose any vulnerabilities. In fact, look, so let me go ahead and show you. If I go to my scans, in this case, um, I tried to identify the host OS, which you can do on Nessus. And I couldn't find anything, uh, unfortunately. I'm not exactly sure if it was the virtual machine. And then I had the advanced scan, which I initiated. And in this case, it gave me the same four vulnerabilities as 
any scan, which is basically telling me that I have a VMware virtual machine running and you know I can ping as well as just you know giving me the general Nessus scan information for this specific scan. All right, so that concludes this project very basic uh, level project here. If you have enjoyed this video, I appreciate you watching. If you could, uh, just leave a like down below to share on the information. And yes, so I'll see you in the next video and in the next home lab.